What's up everybody, this is Steve Sterlacci and today we are looking at the two units. We have the Helix and we have the Quad Cortex. Um, I wanna do a little bit of a workflow comparison because I feel like sonically at this point, no matter what modeling unit you are using, whether it's you know profiling from Kemper, modeling from Axe Effects, modeling from Helix or the Captures and modeling from the QC, the difference is so incremental sonically at this point that it's all user-based, but for me personally, I think that anybody can get any sound that they want out of all of these units and that the difference at this point is really negligible. And if you're one of those Fractal fanboys that's here just to tell me that Fractal sounds the best, there's a PayPal donation link in the bottom of my description. You can click on that, send me the money to get an Axe FX and I will buy it and then I can uh, see if I agree with you or not. So thank you Fractal fanboys for the donations. But for now, let's focus on these two units in front of me. I didn't want to make this a total um, slag on the Quad Cortex because it's in its infancy. So I want you to keep that in mind before we even get started that this has only been out for less than a year, I think, at this point. And it is very much in its infancy. It's not a very well-developed unit in terms of updates and user experience compared to the Helix, which has been around for, I think, over five years now. It's had a ton of updates and a ton of improvements. Um, so keep that in mind when we slag on the QC and what I think that it needs to improve on. I do believe all the improvements are possible. I know a lot of updates are coming, but at this point, I paid full price for this unit and it doesn't do basic things that the Helix can do. So I feel like if you're buying it currently, it should be able to at least hang with the Helix in terms of workflow. And at the moment, I don't think it does. I'm gonna show you guys what I mean by that. First and foremost, let's talk about the QC and what it does well, which is size. Obviously it's a lot smaller and lighter than the Helix. I love that I could throw it into my bag, into my gig bag and just go to a gig. Sonically, again, it's gonna sound very good. I have some particular rare amps and pedals that I want to capture. That's the, my re, my main reason for getting this was to capture my stuff. Maybe I can integrate these units into each other one day. That would be awesome. Let me know if you want to see that in a video. But the size is also something that um, I'm going to edge the Helix because it has the scribble strips, which lets you know what you're turning on and off. The navigation and the visual aspect of the QC is a little bit behind. Um, even when you're in your stomp or scene mode, it's really hard to tell where you are because the knobs don't exactly correspond to the foot switches in terms of location. So it can get a little bit confusing of which one you're turning on and off. So having the names of each thing, being able to customize what you want to call them, having exactly what you want it to look like right there, easy for you to press is, it gives the edge to Helix. Um, the views in the QC are very similar to the Helix LT, which is supposed to be the cheaper, more affordable version of the Helix. I don't know why they would, I don't want to say copy or emulate, but why they would use that model instead of taking a page out of the big Helix and putting those scribble strips on. And also when you're in that stop mode, or at least whatever mode you're in on the Helix LT, you still have this bottom row of parameters to adjust so one of the main things that is appealing about the Quad Cortex is that it has a cool touchscreen. It's got a beautiful seven inch um, touchscreen that works really well. But despite being a very nice user-friendly touchscreen, obviously at like at face value here touchscreen, you're like, oh, it's gotta be awesome. But when you actually start using it, it's got some quirks that are a little bit annoying to deal with. Um, the main thing, for example, is navigating through your menus. So if I'm looking at this menu, that's my presets, you know, this is supposed to be my bank of presets. I can't scroll this menu on the right of folders, but I have this huge list of folders to my left that I can scroll up and down. What I would like to see is maybe a numbered system in the top corner of this folder so that as I scroll, you see what folder you're in and keep this here, but like you could just tap to whichever bank you want to go to or whichever folder you want to go to and it's, you have the option to do both. I don't like navigating through the presets trying to find where, where I'm supposed to be or where I'm currently working. Another interesting thing about the touch screen is that if there are multiple pages for parameters, so, so here I have the tape delay up, but for the tape delay, I can't just scroll over. I have to actually push a button to get to the next page of parameters. I think that's weird. If you have a touch screen, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't I be able to, to swipe to the rest of the um, to the rest of the menu, 
while we are on navigating the quad cortex, when you are doing your captures, captures are the, again, the main reason I bought this, the flagship uh, and the shining light of the quad cortex, the captures, I love them. I think they sound fantastic. I think they're really great. But you can't tell the difference between what you've captured unless you know personally what title it is. But when you're navigating other presets or other captures that other people have uploaded to the cloud, you don't know if it's an amp or a pedal. It could be an amp head on its own with no cabinet, and it could be a full rig amp and cabinet with microphones and stuff. So I think that QC needs to do a better job of distinguishing which type of capture you're dealing with. It should be three categories, three different icons or at least colors so that it's a lot less confusing. Like if you look at a rig, I have four of the same thing that are totally different things. And just visually that can get really confusing and hard to remember what goes where. Next thing I want to touch on is editing blocks on the fly. So I gig full time, I'm always playing in a studio or on a stage and I'm constantly having to make some adjustments on the fly. Anybody that's been doing this long enough, you know that sometimes you gotta make quick adjustments. What I don't like about the quad cortex in this sense is that if you're in your gig view or whichever one it's gonna be, you swipe up and you get to the gig view. You have either stomp, scenes or presets, scenes being like snapshots in the helix where it's like a preset within the preset or your stomps. So if I have this stomp menu and I'm turning things on and off, I can't immediately go edit those from this menu. There's no way to do it. So I have to actually hit close, get out of this menu, remember which icon it is, find the icon, click the icon, and then adjust it. And then I can't even swipe up from this menu. I have to actually hit done and then swipe up again back to that gig view. That's a very time consuming process compared to something like the Helix where, let's say I'm playing with my pedal board here and I need to make a quick adjustment, I can just tap one of the foot switches and it'll bring me right to that block instantly and I have the parameters up all the time. So even if you're in that gig view, like from something on like the Helix LT that has the same similar looking gig view, you'll still have the parameters of the chosen block up there, which is huge. I mean, you tap it and you're able to adjust it with these, you know, the six knobs that are given to you here. And I think that that's such a game changer as far as comparison. I think that the Helix just blows it away in terms of being able to make those adjustments on the fly, something that's very important for gigging musicians or session players that need to make quick changes on the fly. Another downer for the QC is that you can't assign multiple things to one foot switch. So if I'm in stomp mode on the Helix, I can assign up to eight parameter changes or bypass assignments per foot switch, which is a lot. You could do a lot with it. Um, the QC, we're not able to do this yet. That may come in an update again, I'm not sure. So for example, I never take my reverb off, but I will switch types of reverb. So if I have a modulated reverb or a spring reverb, I usually like to just toggle between those back and forth. Um, on QC, I have to bypass each one, assign them to their own foot switch and toggle them back and forth. Again, if I'm in scene mode and I'm doing everything that way, it's not that big of a deal, but I like the flexibility of being able to go some gigs in stomp mode and some gigs in uh, scene or snapshot mode. Um, another thing on that with the Helix, you can actually assign gain, like amp gain, to a stomp box. Basically, you're making a foot switch change the setting on your amp. I really like that you could do that too. Another workflow thing that I'm having a hard time with on the QC is assigning and building a rig. So normally when I build, a, build out a rig or a preset, whatever you want to call it, I put all my pedals and my amp in a line and I want everything bypassed and then I'm going to visualize and figure out where I want the foot switches to go. With Helix, I could just do that right away. I, it just, it goes there and I have a button that's specifically there to make things go bypass. On the QC, that is what you see. It automatically, the options go away. It's just there. So you don't know where it's assigned to, but it assigns it automatically to the lowest possible available foot switch. So in this case, it's switch, foot switch C and it automatically assigns it there even though you might not have wanted it there. So to bypass it, you have to press the switch and then you have to unassign it by pressing the X button. And that all just feels really unnecessary and long. For example, in the Helix, when I throw in a distortion pedal, it takes me two seconds. I want it to go to an available foot switch. I tap it and it's not assigned anywhere until I do the assigning. I think that's just a much better workflow. The other one is just, I feel like the QC just kind of is very tedious and uh, kind of unnecessary. So the next thing I want to talk about is the 
connecting to the computer process, I don't know, computer connectivity, whatever it is. When you connect um, via USB with either unit, you get kind of a totally different experience with either one. I would think that the QC is getting a much needed change in the future and updates and stuff. Um, we're gonna get a desktop editor, I would hope. I use HX Edit, the desktop editor for the Helix, all the time, almost exclusively. It's super easy to use. I love that it's on the desktop. I don't wanna have to keep bending over and making adjustments on the floor or having the unit up here on the table with me. I, it's just, I don't wanna physically do that. I wanna keep my eyes on the computer and I wanna be able to do all of my work in one place instead of having to constantly be moving around. The next thing I wanna to touch on is, it goes along with that because when you load impulse responses, when you're loading IRs, you could just connect to the USB and drag them from a folder right into the Helix. Right now, as it stands with the QC, you have to do this very annoying process of going to their website, you have to upload the IR files to their website, which pushes it into the cloud, into your account, and then you have to go into the QC menu, find it on the QC, and then download it into the QC, which is such a long process for something so unnecessary. And then even when you are, even when you do install them into the QC to get to them, and this took me a little bit to find out, even though I actually do read the manual, but to get to this, you actually have to go to your cabinet block, click on the microphone and scroll all the way down to load IR. And that is how you get your impulse response into your preset where on the Helix, it's just like a regular old block. You have an option for it just like you do anything else. And you just have something that says impulse response and it's right there for you to look at. And your whole menu of impulse responses is right there. Continuing with the connectivity stuff, file sharing on the QC is really pretty bad right now. Um, file sharing with the Helix, you can make their uh, HLX files, they're their own files. They go into folders, you can share them, you can email them, you can text them, you can do whatever you want communicative wise and send people presets. I love that the QC is operating on Wi-Fi and you can send things over Wi-Fi, but you can't like post them on a website for people to download. There's no source where you can download these things from, put them on the computer, keep them on the computer and then put them on the unit. You actually have to go to their cloud and you have to download it. You have to, first you have to star it in your account, then you have to go into the unit, find your starred ones. The unit connects to the Wi-Fi, you go through there, and then download it from there. It's a, just a weird process. Instead of just a simple download, click and drag right from the computer. And it makes it very hard for people like me that I sell presets for the Helix, and I was looking forward to making and selling presets for the QC, but right now that's not possible. Apparently there's gonna be something in the future, a marketplace of some sort for the QC, where creators can make and sell presets, but right now I would have to literally keep it as a private preset and then every single person that purchases it, I would have to get their screen name, find them, follow them back, and then send them directly the preset. And now if I do a preset pack, I'd have to go out of that menu and individually send them each version of the preset, each one of the pack to each individual buyer. It's just insane. Instead of just having one folder that if you buy it, you just download the folder and that's the end of the story. Or if I have a free preset pack, you just go there, download the pack, and it's right there for you to use. Easy and no problem. I think QC really needs to fix that and I do believe that will happen in a future update. At least I hope so. Okay, my biggest issue with the Quad Cortex, absolute frustrating, like want to rip my hair out type of thing. Before we get to the rest of the video, I wanted to take a minute to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. My favorite thing about Skillshare is that it's not limited to one, you know, vessel of creativity. There's literally classes on anything you can think of. Think short and sweet and straight to the point. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, so there's never gonna be any type of ads or anything on any of the videos, and they're always launching new premium classes, so your creativity is constantly gonna be pushed, and there's always gonna be a new thing to learn. Currently, I'm working my way through YouTube Success Script, Shoot and Edit with MKBHD, a class by Marquez Brownlee, who is a YouTuber. I identify as a self-taught filmmaker. I didn't go to film school. And my favorite part about this class is that you didn't go to school 
to learn this. He learned, you know, trial by fire and trial through experience, which is exactly how I approach my videos and my guitar playing. So you can join Skillshare for less than $10 a month, which I think is a crazy good deal considering the amount that's on the website. So for my viewers, the first thousand people that click on the link below in the description, you're gonna get a free trial for the premium membership. Right now they're offering an entire month with this video, so if you're one of the first thousand people to click that link, you will get a free entire month of Skillshare. Let me know what you're signing up for and what classes you're interested in. We'd love to talk to you guys about it. Let's get back to the video. These encoder button knobs things are awesome. I love the concept that you could push them and you could turn them and have them be knobs. But what drives me nuts and what I don't understand is why do these not line up with the parameter that we're changing? For example, I'm looking at this. This mid knob is controlled by this knob. This treble knob is controlled all the way over here. So visually, that's really bad in my opinion. I, for so, I, so many times, if I had a dollar for every time I turned the wrong knob, I would have been able to pay off the unit already because this is just so frustrating. Like I find myself just using the touch screen more than anything where I'm just gonna click and drag to change my parameters because you see this output right here on the, uh, the US Twin Normal. This output, it, it's all the way down here. And if I'm trying to work quickly, I miss every time because they're not lined up. I would rather have six parameters right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, these six in the middle, line them up with the parameter, line them up with the knob, and put them top and bottom so that you can at least tell which one you're turning. Because for me, this is a really big issue and really annoying for me, because I, I never believe that this mid knob is here and this treble knob is over here. Never once does that happen with me. On Helix, we have six available knobs and each knob corresponds to the parameter that it's right in front of. And if it doesn't fit, you page over. You could do the same thing in QC, it's just not there yet. So my absolute favorite part of the Helix is called Command Center. And what Command Center is, it gave, basically gives you a blank slate to fully customize anything you want in it. You can put presets, you can put snapshots, you can put stomp boxes, parameter controls. It's like pretty endless what you could do with Command Center and it's basically a hybrid mode where you could take anything from anywhere and put it in here. Compared to the QC, which just currently has scenes, stomps, or preset mode. You can't mix and match those. I think that that's a total knockout punch for the Helix because being able to have just one scene that does whatever you want and then having your pedal assignments, you can jump to presets. You can actually map out your whole show without ever leaving one menu, which in my opinion is really valuable. And another favorite of Helix that is, I don't know if it's, it can't be proprietary, I guess, but they have what's called pedal edit mode, which is one of the best things to ever happen to any type of unit like this where I can totally hands-free adjust my presets. This would be something the QC would benefit from, especially not having a desktop editor right now. Being able to edit hands-free is really awesome. All you do is hold down this button here and it takes you into a menu and all of these parameters, you just select the effect, select the parameter, and then you can use the expression pedal or you can use the arrows to fine tune your adjustments. And you can basically tune your pedal while playing or any parameter that you want, whether it's delay, amp settings, pedal settings, it's endless what you want to adjust and you could do it all hands-free really simply. And that is a total absolute knockout punch for the Helix. So let me know if you have a Helix or if you have a Quad Cortex, what do you guys think is the better buy? What do you think of the Quad Cortex if you have one? What do you think of the Helix if you have one? Do you hate it? Do you love it? Let's uh, get the discussion going on in the comments and then we can fight it out there. And if you guys made it this far in this video, I appreciate you spending the time with me and watching and I will see you in the next one.